إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد اخوتي في الله اعلم ان خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر النور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار اخوتي في الله The reality is that I don't know where to start from. I am very disappointed, very stressed over certain things that I see and experience within the Muslim community. And one of the main thing is that we learn this deen not to practice but we learn this deen just for the sake of information we come to salatul jum'a every single friday but our behavior does not change regardless what we learned we're not improving we're not moving forward. Rather, we are stagnant or we're going backwards. We're not changing our lifestyle. We're not saying, this is what I did last Friday. Let me move on. And let me see what I can learn this Friday and apply it so I can, I can upgrade myself. This is not part of our agenda. At work, we read what is necessary for us to upgrade our understanding because this is my job. But when it comes to the Sharia of Rahman, we want to say the same thing, not doing anything different. And one of the things that really we heard many times and we read about is the word al ukhuwa brotherhood in islam do you know the fact is there is no brotherhood amongst us do you know i'm not saying this is what islam teaches i'm saying this is what our actions shows there is no brotherhood amongst us. 
We really do not care about one another. We don't ask about one another. We don't even bother to ask if so-and-so is dead or alive. Is he in town or not? And the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the man who takes care of al aramin widows, one miskeen and the needy people, poor people, كَنْ مُجَاهِدِ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَوَ الْقَائِمَ اللَّيْلِ وَالصَّائِمَ النَّهَارِ A person who takes care of the, need, of the needs of the people is as much though he is doing jihad fi sabili Allah, as though he is doing qiyam al-layl every single night, all night long, He's fasting every other day. For what? Because he's concerned about others. I'm so stressed with this. What is wrong with the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What is wrong with this Ummah that has its success in one book? Yet we are not following it. What is our problem? Well, please, educate me, inform me. Why do we hear Islam from one ear and let it go from the other ear? The minute Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَةَ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ وَإِنْ أَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ فَإِخْوَانُكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ What is this ukhuwa if, if it does not exist in a real life? When was the last time, ya akhi, that you visit your Muslim brother? When was the last time that you received an invitation from a Muslim brother? When was the last time you bothered yourself I said, let me go and visit my Muslim brother. It's not. See, subhanAllah, there are certain type of animals. When they see threats, they run. And when the threat is eliminated, they go back to their daily lives. Sheep, camels, goats, you know, Will there be all these animals when the lions attack them, they run. As soon as the lion grabs one of them, they continue grazing and they don't bother what happened to that one. Lions that do completely have different nature. Elephants have different nature. And that is when one of them is in trouble, they come forward to help that. When one of them is in need, they come forward to help that one. And then they carry on. But as Muslims, we are living like those cattle. Do not care about anything and anyone as long as I'm okay. Subhanallah, ya ikhwati fillah. Al ikhwa fil Islam means action. لذلك النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال مثل المؤمنين في توادي مثل المؤمنين في توادي وتراحم وتعاطم كمثل الجسد. Do you know what is happening around the country? Do you know what is happening to the Muslims overseas? Do you have any idea what is coming up? Are we oblivious about everything and we move on? Most likely, we don't care, and we're not following, and we don't want to know. Umar Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhu said, stating how the Muslims used to help one another. He said, one of, the, one of us received a head of a goat. Someone slaughtered his goat, and they gave the head to that man. فَقَالَ إِذْهَبُوا إِلَىٰ بَنِي فُلَانِ فَإِنَّهُ أَحْوَجَ مِنِّي he said, no, 
take this and give it to my neighbor. He's more in need of than I. So they went to the neighbor. And they gave it to the neighbor. And the neighbor, he looked at that piece of meat and he said, give it to my neighbor. He's in need. He's more in need than I. And they keep giving until that piece of meat came to the first man. Now this is called concern. Yaqul ibn Umar, فَأَنزَلَ الله. At the end of the surah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَالَّذِينَ تَبَوَّعُوا دَارًا وَالْإِيمَانَ يُحِبُّونَ مَنْ هَاجِرَ إِلَيْهِمْ حَتَّى قَالَ وَلَا يَجِدُونَ فِي صُدُورِ فِي أَنْ فِي صُدُورِ مِحَاجَةٍ مِمَّا هُوتُ وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصْرَاسِ وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصْرَاسِ And they overlook their own need and they move on and they help the others. إِخْوَةِ فِي اللَّهِ in the Muslim world and in the city of Toronto, there are needs. Muslim brothers and sisters are in need. Some of them, they come to the masjid and they're asking, which is need what we can eat for the day? But us, walillahi alhamdu, we do not pay any attention to that. Simply because we live like cattle. We only concern about ourselves. There are the Muslims, Ya Ikhwati Fillah, who are in trouble. Not because they commit a ma'asiyah or they break, break a law. No. Their claim or their crime is they are Muslims. They say, La ilaha illallah, therefore they are criminals and they are charged for that. What are you doing for, about that? How are you helping? Do you even know that they exist? Do you even bother to know how many Muslim kids in prison? Do you even bother to know how many Muslim sisters struggling with their children? Can't even bring them to the masjid because they don't have the bus fare? And they live not too far away from the masjid and from you? Do we know about them? Did you ever come to the masjid or to the imam or to the administration and said, listen, is there any Muslims who are in need? MashaAllah, we all act to the days of Eid because we want to give zakat al-fitr. But the rest of the year, we don't know, we don't care to know. Ya ikhwati fillah, let us change. Let us start being selfish. Let us start worrying, stop worrying about ourselves and let us start thinking about others. Because you have Muslimat, Muslim sisters who are in your oh help, you need your help. أقول ما تسمعون استغفر الله لكم فاستغفروا إنه الغفور الرحيم. الله مرحب. إخوتي في الله. يقول أبو مسلم الخولاني دخلت مسجد دمشق بالشام أو بالشام فإذا بالشاب براق الثنايا. He said I walk into the masjid of Damascus and I saw this young man who looks very decent. والناس حوله and they sitting around this young man with a khtalafu asnadu al-amra ilayhi wa sadaru an amrir. And when they differ in any matter, they will refer back to him and they will follow his suggestion. فَقُلْتُ مَنْ هَذَا I said to them, who is this man? قَالُوا مُعَاذِ بْنُ جَبَلْ They said, this is Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu anhu. He said, the next day I came to the masjid very early. He said that I saw Mu'adh ibn Jabal came to the masjid earlier than I. I said to myself, I must wait this man and meet this man. So I waited until he finished his salah. فَقُلْتُ إِنِّي وَاللَّهِ أُحِبُّكَ فِي اللَّهِ وَفِي رِوَايِ أُحِبُّكَ لِلَّهِ 
I love you for the sake of Allah. Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu an قال Allah Are you serious? By Allah you really love me for the sake of Allah? I said Allah I love you for the sake of Allah. Taqaddam ya ikhwati fi Allah. Allah you Muslim brothers to get into the masjid. Taqaddam tafassahu. Mu'adh ibn Jabal said do you really love me for the sake of Allah? قال نعم قال فأخذ بردائي he said he grabbed my garment and he brought me closer to him and he put his arm around my shoulders and he said ابشر glad tidings فإني سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول وجبت محبة المتحابين في والمتجالسين في والمتزاورين في في والمتباذلين في. صحيح في صحيح البخاري. He said glad tidings for you because I heard the messenger of Allah saying وجبت محبتي my mahabba, my love became wajib. For whom? For those who do the action itself. Not to say one another, I love you for the sake of Allah and walk away. He said, no. Those who will sit together for my sake. Those who will visit one another for my sake. Those who will give one another for my sake. Action is involved. Not wish, not desire, not something that we have in mind. Actions are involved. So the moment that you perform these actions, the moment that you go and you visit your Muslim brother, you give your Muslim brother, you help your Muslim brother, then the mahabba of Allah will become wajib for you. Must. And in Allah, people based on their iman. Not because he is Pakistani and you are Pakistani. He's Somali and you are Somali. He's Egyptian and you, you know you're Egyptian. And it is very apparent very clear to us that we don't love one another for the sake of Allah but we love one another because of our nationality because of our associations and that's why when we have family day you see the Somali brothers running mashallah as though they hiding from everyone else and they sit and they close, sit behind closed doors you see the Pakistani brothers sitting in a little corner. You see the other brothers sitting in a little corner. And we don't care about one another. Messenger of Allah said, this is not how you love one another. No. You sit with your Muslim brother because he is more righteous than you. You be with him and you be his companions because you think he's closer to Allah than you. Salman al-Farisi. Suhaib al-Rumi, Bilal, Abu Dhar and others were sitting. And Abu Bakr al-Siddiq was sitting. Abu Sufyan, Sufyan bin Abi Sufyan bin Harb came. Which has accepted Islam and the Sahaba. Bilal who used to be tortured. Suhaib used to be tortured by the Quraysh and all these people. And then when they saw Abu Sufyan coming, they said the source of Allah did not take it, their rights from the heads and the necks of the Quraysh. They referring to Abu Sufyan. Abu Bakr said, you talking to Abu Sufyan like this and he's the chief of the Quraysh? And he walked away. He went to the messenger of Allah and he said, Ya Rasulullah, this is what happened and this is what I said. فَقَالَ يَا أَبَا بَكْرِ لَأَلَّكَ أَغْضَبْتَهُ يَا أَبَا بَكْرِ Perhaps 
Perhaps you made them upset. Maybe you made Bilal and Suhaib, you made them upset on the expense of to protect Abba Sufyan. Indeed, if you made them upset, your Lord is upset with you. Your Lord is upset with you. Abba Bakr anhu came back. Faqana ya ikhwani, my beloved brothers. Did I make you mad or upset with me? Qalu la ghafar Allahu laka ya Abba Bakr. No, O Abu Bakr, may Allah forgive you. They love one another based on their connection to Allah. Not because he's from their family, he is from this fault. Because he or she is connected to Allah, we respect, we honor, we love that person. But today we go down to the flames because he's one of us. And we will uh, disown and abandon the others because he is not one of us. Not for Islam, but for nationalities. Not for Islam, but for tribalism. Not for Islam, but for personal gain. And this is why we are in this situation. We do not change. We do not change, and we will not change unless we start practical steps. Remember, Ya Ikhwati Fillah. When you do something, you do it for your Muslim brother. And when you do it, you overdo it because this is how the situation should be. Ibn Shubrana, rahimahullah, he did a great favor to his Muslim, one of his Muslim brothers. And then in return, the man came and he gave a gift to Ibn Shubrana. Ibn Shubrana said, what is this? He said, I give you back some of what you did for me. May Allah protect you and pardon you. Take your wealth. لا خير في أخي. He said there is no khair in a brotherhood. That the brother would not help his brother as much as he can. He said the day that your Muslim brother doesn't help you and he's not for you at the time of need. فتوضأ وضوءك للصلاة. Perform the wudu that you make for salah and pray janazah on him, he is dead. He is dead. Now how many of us are dead but sitting right here? How many of us are dead and the only weight that they have is the weight that they have on this counter carpet that they're sitting on? There is no action. There is no fan. Not for Muslims, not for Islam, not for deen, not for community. But we are so focused on all our little own worlds. And tomorrow when something hits you, you will say, it's just another person. Wallahi, I'm positive, even, even though I am your khatib, I am your imam of this masjid. I am certain, as certain as I am that I will die one day. That if anything happens to me, if they come tomorrow, they say, he's a terrorist. He is this. I am certain. All of you will say, who is the next khatib? Who is the next khatib? I am so certain that majority, 99% of the people do not care about what happens to other Muslims. We move on. And we go back to our jobs as though nothing happened. And that's why, subhanAllah, this society, they know that illness. They know that illness. And a reporter came to me today. He asked me about Aga Khan, Ismailis, Ahmadis, and how they unite and what they do for each other. He never asked me anything about Ahl Sunnah. Because he already knows that we are Careless people. We do not bother. We don't care as long as we have our job, alhamdulillah. But I'll tell you something, Akhi. Hold on to your number because you are nothing but a number. When the first number is taken, you're next. When the second person is taken, he ne he's next. Just hold on to your number because your turn is coming. Unless you and I move and do something as a community as an ummah, as a unit. Put your science, put your differences aside. 
and concentrate what would help the Muslim Ummah and what can we do for them. Not just being extra number and when you, tomorrow when they take you away or something happens to you, big deal. It's just an extra number. So we start with your family from now on. Get to know them. Get to your neighbors. Get to your new community. Ask the brothers who's next to you who he is, what is his name, where does he work. Stop, stop being like, like one of those, subhanAllah, wild animals rushing out of the masjid. Doesn't care about anything except his job. Or am I late five minutes? What is this man is going to say about me? Take the time and sit with your Muslim brothers. Socialize. Ahmed bin Hanbal, I'm sorry if you mentioned the Imam, Imam Malik. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, well, hadith bi sanad hasan. He said, shake hands with one another. Shake hands with one another. It breaks the walls up between you. Hug one another, ya ikhwati fillah. Tahabu. Learn how to care about one another. Learn to love one another. And start being like this. Start being like this. Be concerned about your Muslim brothers and sisters because today, you're in a better situation today. But tomorrow, Allah will what happened to us. Allahumma Azza al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma Azza al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma Azza al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma inak a'lam bi halina farhamna. Allahumma inak a'lam bi halina farhamna. Allahumma alif bayna qulubina. اللهم ألف بين قلوبنا اللهم ألف بين قلوبنا واقم الصلاة يرحم يرحمكم الله